All right, continuing on the the truck arm rear suspension. Now that the front cross member is welded in, I've been thinking about this. I think I'm just going to cut these rear X's right out of here because it's really not doing much. I don't think anymore with the relief cuts needed to get to the uh, the bolts on the arms. What I think I'm going to do is just cut these out, cut them straight up from the cross member and actually box the, the frame rails on the rear section. Because all this is is a C-channel frame. I really don't think this is gonna be needed anymore. Now we've got this monstrous cross member welded in uh, to keep the frame set, and it's just like any other C-channel frame. So I think I'm just gonna cut these out and box the, uh, the frame in from the rear rails. Because I can, there's a couple ways you could do this. I put truck arms on my last 55 Buick and fit them inside the rails, the, uh, the X. They will fit. I could fill this in completely and make mounts here and, and have it work. Um, but I think to get more room for exhaust and such, now that this monster cross member is welded in here, I don't see why I need this short little section of X, especially when one side has all these factory holes cut in it. I don't see how it's doing much. The the X brace is already tied into the car, at least the, the front half of the X brace is tied into the car now with this cross member. So that's all plenty stout, that's fine. So I think I'm just gonna cut this straight up from the rail here and cut it in the back and then fit in a piece there to box the, the frame. Even as an open C channel, I bet it's still plenty strong. It's boxed in the rear section already from the factory. But I'm gonna do it my way. We'll try something different, see what happens. Got my never throw it away, absolutely destroyed flannel so I can set myself on fire. And uh, the other thing is, like I mentioned before, I've done this before on my other 55 Buick and the arms went right inside these, uh, this cross and just made mounts in the middle to mount it all. You don't have to do this. You don't have to cut this stuff out. If you've got one of these X frames and you don't want to cut this stuff out, don't cut it out. You don't have to. You can make a mount that goes in here. I'm only doing this because I made this beefy cross member here tying everything together and I have to run a pretty big exhaust, at least a three inch. And I want to try to fit it through here. And it's not easy with the truck arms. You run four length, you've got some more room. But I'm really just trying something different. Like I said, I did it one way in the one car. I'm going to try something different on this car. We'll see what it does. Not like anything is going to break. It's metal. I can cut it. I can cut it out. I don't like it. I put it back in. No big deal. Done. So, here goes nothing. Let's trim some metal. We're through, frame didn't budge, nothing. Didn't feel anything, uh, any tension release, nothing at all. I have some smoke, because I think there's a mouse nest in this frame I may have located. But uh, that's usual. All right, so I'm gonna cut this up front. And for this, I'll just make a rough cut now and then I'll come back with a, a nice straight line and trim it back. For now, I'll just cut it here.
something to it. And this stuff is really, really thin material. Not even an eighth. It's pretty thin. So. All right. The next thing on the same thing on the other side. Make a rough cut and come back and trim out. that back and use that to box on the other side. This one I could use part of it depending on how much I want to box. Again, it probably doesn't need to be boxed at all. Uh, out of those X braces that I removed, I just basically trimmed them down, made a pair of uh, sections and they're going to fit right inside the frame. Compressor's on, make some noise. So I'll put one on each side, just cause why waste it, right? Got the metal, put a box section in there, just to add some strength, and back here. So as I was saying, these trim sections here that I made will are the perfect fit to go right inside the frame rail. So those will fit in there nicely, make some sections there that are boxed. And then back here, where the original X started to curve out, I'm just going to make a little relief cut on the top and the bottom and just knock that in straight and re-weld it. And that should be that. Should work good. All right, let me get that done. We'll come back. So the, uh, the pieces I cut there out of the X's, I'm going to put them in the frame toward the rear, section this in, and then put this, knock this section in, and then tie this together and basically use those scraps to box the frame right here in a, a good area. This is, I, I think, is a good, uh, good spot to box it. It's a high stress area right in the front of the rear axle there. And basically take the support and put it back that I removed by taking out the X. And then up uh, on the front here, I just trimmed off these pieces here. I'm just going to box that in. I'll just weld in a piece there and, and uh, make that back into a piece of I-beam. Though it really is already with the, the cross member there. It already is an I-beam. So I don't know. Maybe it'll fill it in. Maybe it won't. We'll see. But anyway, these are going to go in and tie that to the roof. All right, anyway. back to it. First off, I have to apologize for the audio. I checked a couple of videos and it... The audio is really not that great. I have a feeling um, since this phone took a fall the other day, the microphone may have taken a hit. So I'm going to have to figure out something else to take videos. But for now, this is all I have, and I can't stop working. This has to get done. So um, right now, I boxed in the, the rails. Those pieces are in. That worked out really nice on both sides. And I really like this because with the that rear section of the X out of the way opens up everything. I mean, you could very easily put a, 
any kind of suspension you want in here with, with that X out of the way. There's rear cross pieces. So we're going to continue on with this. I'm going to stick with the truck arm. And, uh, but it's something to keep in mind for my next Buick builds. If I do this again, it really make it easy to do anything. So if I can't source a, a set of truck arms, I could always go with a four link or something else. I just like trying different things and seeing what works. So anyway, um, I've got the arms basically just sitting in place. Now I got to make up some tabs to tie the arms to that cross member there. And everything is just bolted down tight at the, the rear axle. And once the front mounts are done, can cut the, uh, the rear loose, can take a look at shock mounts and such, but we'll be to the point where I can put the springs on it and make this thing roll. I want to get this uh, done as soon as possible so that I can get that Mustang in here and get that thing stripped and scrapped out and gone and uh, get back to this and the stuff that I want to do not instead of dealing with a Mustang. So let me get uh, some patterns or stuff for whatever's made up here. I've got still have the, the pieces I cut off of the trailer. Maybe I'll just torch those out and use those as a starting point and see what that looks like. All right, hopefully this thing isn't making a ton of noise. We'll see what the video looks like. Okay, so made some patterns and making the tabs now out of a quarter inch plate, heavy, heavy steel that I had here. So welded the, uh, the outer tabs on. Um, obviously lots of measuring made sure the the arms were the same position left to right on the car uh, same distance from the frame same height back at the axle over here lots of measuring uh set up the arms the same distance from the copper brackets to the arms so that's the same both sides made sure i had enough room up here for the uh, spring pad to get next to the u-bolt and the spring to get yeah spring to fit in there so next thing will be making the inner tabs for the front there and then uh back here moving on to shock mounts and the pan hard bar mount and there really is not much left after that that's it. All right, back at the next one. Continuing on the uh, front tabs. So this is what they look like. Nothing special, just cut out a quarter inch plate uh, to make the holes. I uh, just used uh, plasma to cut the rough hole and then a unibit to sneak up on it because it's a three quarter hole and I don't have any plain drill bits that size. Unibit worked great. I just used the bolt to uh, make sure I got it just as the bolt just fits in. So that works nice. And then these guys just fit in like that. Weld that to the cross member. And we'll be good to go. So once the, uh, I said once the arms were in place, it didn't make it too difficult to make the tabs. You can just measure off of the, the uh, cross member to the center line or where the bolt's going to come through make a template, add us some cardboard, and off you go. So we'll burn these in. Okay, so the front tabs are now welded in. So I'm all good at the, the cross member. That's all finished. So now I gotta move to the back. So, got a bunch of different things going on back here to look at before things get welded. Um, first thing is, before I can set my uh, pads for the springs and before I can do my pan hard bar mount, I need to have the axle pinion angle set. I uh, should have done that initially when I uh, welded it to the car. Right now the pinion is five degrees up, so that's too much. What I'm going to do is I'm just going to cut the tacks loose on my uh, pieces that are welded to the car and change my pinion angle to three degrees, verify the axle still centered in the car. And then once that's set, I can go ahead and move to the next 
next steps, which would be the spring mounts and uh, tack welding the purchase for the axle and so on and so forth. But I still want to keep the axle at ride height for now uh, to get especially the shock mounts set up so I know my travel. All right, so I'm going to cut those tacks off that garbage first and get this set straight to uh, three degrees up, that is, three degrees up. Okay, now that the uh, second gen rear axle is ready to weld in, of course, I've got to do something else too, right? Get crazy. Because I can't make up my mind. Well, anyway, I went shopping this morning to Connecticut and picked up a couple uh, eight inch Corvette style rallies for cheap. Otherwise I wouldn't have driven that far to get them. They're not perfect, but they're perfect for this car. At least I think so. I don't know. I'm gonna put tires on them, get a measurement because I also picked up that. That is a 88 273 Posse out of a Fox body Mustang for the grand total of $100. Pretty damn cheap. I mean, considering the fact that that 88 is basically the modern 12 bolt Chevy, it's just mind boggling how many of them are out there and how cheap you can get them. And nobody wants a 273, except for somebody like me who actually is thinking of running the Turbo 400. So with the Turbo 400 uh, transmission, 273 makes perfect sense. Not a problem at all. Don't have to run a 4L80. I can just run the Turbo 400. Only uh, deal with this rear is obviously four lug rear. Got to change out the five. There's a couple ways to do that. And we will get into that. Okay, welcome back to another episode of Let's Change Our Mind. All right, now, if I didn't say it before, I'll say it again. It's good to have a plan when you build a car and stick to the plan, and it usually goes pretty smooth then. Smoother, I guess you could say. But I don't care. In this case, I'm changing my mind. And even though it's silly to base a car build off of wheels, that's usually how I work. I like what something looks with the wheels, and everything goes based on that. So you know what? I put my uh, my 275 60s on those 8-inch rallies that I just picked up for cheap. I think they were they were 50 bucks for the pair, which is cheap for Corvette rallies, at least for 8s. And I really like the way they look. And I can't use them with the second-gen rear. It's just too wide. But I want these tires on the car. So that's the way it's going to be. So I was to the point of doing the welding on this rear axle so this is of course if you've been if you've been following along that's the second gen f body rear uh 308 posi and it's ready to be welded in it's just basically sitting on the purchase but i want a narrower rear so here's what the plan is i have a g body 373 posi out of a mid i think it's a, it was out of an 87 monte carlo super sport it's the spindly 75 ring gear um it was out of a parts car i had it has a a rear cover with a girdle and i don't know if it has new gears in it or anything like that i haven't even popped the cover on it all i know is it is still the old week 75 but it's narrow and it will let me run any of the wheels i want to run so what i think i'm going to do now is I'm putting the G body rear in here and I have options to build a better rear if I blow it up. I figure it's going to be on the street. I'm running street tires. Most of the time it's just going to spin the tires. I don't think I'm going to spit it into pieces just beating on it on the street. And if I do, I have doing been doing some research with the 488s and found that the 2000, I think it's 2006 and up Crown Vicks with the super wide rear axle have 31 spline uh, carriers. It is 31 spline axles. Nobody wants those axles. They're so wide, they, they don't fit anything. But I could narrow one down and throw Fox body uh, axles in it or just make it the width I want, which is the plan. Just make it the same as a G body and just 
call Moser and have them send me some custom axles. You know, they say, give me a G body axle. You know, the dimensions, you know, or, and, uh, or give me rather a crown Vic axle, you know, the dimensions and make it the same length as a G body, you know, or I'll measure it up when the time comes. So basically it shouldn't be a big deal. So I could build an eight, eight to replace the G body rear anytime if I need to do that. So I'm going to take this, uh, axle out put the uh, G-Body 373 posi up in there and mock it up. And then we'll get into pinion angle and the spring mounts and that kind of stuff. The only real difference between them is this uh, G-Body rear obviously does not have disc brakes on it. Don't care, drum brakes are just fine. And that's just the way it'll be. So let me get that G-Body rear into the garage and uh, I'll put it up against this one. You can see how much difference there is in width. All right. Well, there is the uh, G-body rear axle. And if you aren't surprised, it's not going in the car. <laughs> I just spent the last few hours trying every combination of wheel and whatever. And this uh, G-body fits the car no problem and will allow the use of those big 15 by 8 rallies with the 275s problem is once i looked at them on the car i did not like the way it looked it looked uh, almost pro street you know and i you know and i know uh that's a cool look i have a pro street car myself but that's from the 90s and i don't really like that look anymore it looked it i just didn't like it maybe if the, you know if the tire was tucked up i still don't think i'd like it because the whole idea of this car is not to look like a race car and those big tires just i don't know it just looked out of place i just didn't like the way it looked so that was one part of today's deal was buying those 15 by 8 rallies to try them out they were cheap who cares the other part that 8.8 .8. well that's here and the whole idea of this was this rear is one inch narrower narrow narrow work can i speak tonight tired one inch narrower on each side than the second gen f body once again in my hand with the tape measure this does not measure what I have found on the Ford sites, they say. I don't know what tape measure the Ford guys use to measure rear axles, but I don't get the same numbers. I'm sorry. <laughs> Everything I saw online said this is supposed to be 58 and a half wheel mounting to wheel mounting. It's not. It's 59 and a quarter. This is a Fox body. It's the narrowest one there is. It's 59 and a quarter wheel mounting to wheel mounting. Two inches narrower than my uh, second gen F body, which was 61 and a quarter. So this will work perfect for the car. And I will use the uh, seven inch rallies and the two 55 60s that I had on there originally that were tight to the outside with the second gen rear had a ton of room on the inside this should make it very nicely centered now the only deal with this rear is the four lug uh, axles so you can buy this is a 28 spline stock 273 gear perfect for a turbo 400 it looks beautiful inside i just had it open you can buy 28 spline axles with the Ford uh, five on four and a half pattern from Summit and Jags if they had them in stock. They don't. You can buy the more expensive ones, but the, the Jags brand and the Summit brand, they're just not in stock at the moment. But I'm not concerned because this car is not going to be on the road in two weeks, although it, it will be out. I guarantee I will drive this car and it won't be a year from now. I'll tell you that. So what I'm going to do is I was playing around. And here is the Ford uh, drum. 
the four four on uh, this is a four lug by four and a half bolt circle. This is a beat rotor that was from the second gen uh, rear, and it has somehow it works out that the register on the drum and the register on that rotor they just lock together. I mean it, it like self centers. It's unreal. And if I line up one bolt hole, all the others are solid. So my silly idea is to use a transfer punch and punch the uh, marks in this drum and drill this drum. Now, I could probably go to the junkyard. I think uh, a Ranger might be the same. Again, I don't know Fords. I've seen some stuff on YouTube where they took Ranger axles and, and put them in this thing to get the five lug. But still, Ford pattern, I still got to change the GM. So, my crazy idea is to do what you see here and create the drum. And if it doesn't work, I'll just have to go get a drum. But based on what I see here, I should be able to knock the studs out of one of the axles from this rear and put the drum on it and make my own pattern on it and use transfer punches and pop holes in this in this uh, factory four log axle and turn it into a five isn't uh, you know is it going to work i don't know but i this is so crazy i have to try it the one hole that's off a little bit i can just add some weld onto the axle i'll just make the hole a little smaller you know what, what's the the worst that could happen what the the, the stud uh i screw up really bad and uh the studs loose and I have to tack weld it in place or something. I don't think I'm going to get the bolt circle off really much because the drum is going to locate to the register on the axle. And so you really can't get it out of, you know, out of round unless you just totally screw up drilling the holes, which is quite possible. But I'm going to try not to do that. So, ha. <laughs> <sighs> The next madness uh, project then is to just turn this into a five lug GM pattern so I can get it in the car. And if axles come in at some point and it, you know, I think this is stupid and, you know, I'm just going to use these axles to roll it around. But if it works, hey, I'll drive with these axles. It's just punching holes and see what it does. Worst case scenario. I have to get axles, uh, new axles, but I'm going to try this and see if I don't screw it up. So, someday I will get this freaking rear suspension finished, but I think this will work. So I got to blow the brackets off of this rear axle, clean it up, pull the axles out, and go from there. Okay, it's the next day. And I'm starting on this 8.8 uh, this install into the car. And uh, the last uh, video I made, I was talking about changing this from a factory 4 lug to a 5 lug. And I'm going to do that, but it will not be for the final car on the road situation. I'll, I'll wait and get the, uh, the Summit or the Jegs axles as soon as they come into stock with the factory uh, Ford 5 on 4.5 pattern. And I'll redrill those to GM. Because it's safer to drill the five lug to a five lug because the studs will be centered between each other and there'll be plenty of material. When I take this rotor off of this drum, we'll see how much material is actually between the studs. I think some of them may be very close to the original holes and that would be no good for an axle for actually beating it on the street. But as far as for getting the car rolling, it'll work just fine. And I need to get this car rolling because I need to get that piece of garbage in here and get that thing stripped out and uh and get it gone to the crusher because it's a dumpster and that's what it's going to be so like i said in the last video also just by luck this rotor just self-centered itself right on that mustang drum they just the registers just kind of fell together so i got myself a harbor freight transfer kit found a punch that fit these holes very nicely perfectly so we just marked spots through that gave myself a little center for the drill bits to hit 
and the only wool that hole there is kind of an overlap I just I may have to do that with a carbide bit I'm gonna to try to drill it I don't know if I'll be able to just the way that is but I'll get it opened up one way or another so next steps will be to drill these holes time to drill some holes Here's what the, uh, where the five holes are compared to the four lug. These two, plenty of meat. This one's a little close to this hole, and this one's a little close to that hole. And then that one, of course, was the opening of the original hole. There's a good drill guide to drill the axle. This one's a little tighter. Fitting this? Maybe uh, it's a different size. I don't know. Let me see. Oh, it's right there. All right, I just have to clean off the uh, the burrs on that, and then uh, break this apart and see what it looks like. See what this. So here's my my Mustang uh, road for four lug drum. And that locks right in, and there you can see my GM pattern. And the transfer punch. Now the only thing with this is, and this is what I would do differently on the the real axle versus this temporary axle. The drum is so shallow that you really can't get the transfer punch to slide through and, and leave a mark. I'd have to do this one by eye. But when I get my real uh, five lug axles, what I'll do is I'll take an aluminum wheel adapter from uh, four and a half to four and three quarter, knock the studs out of it, and bolt it right to the uh, to the axle. Those are going to be at least a half inch, three quarters thick where the uh, studs come through which is plenty for a transfer punch to get through there and get a real accurate mark but like I said I just need to make this thing roll so I'm gonna do this by eye all right so drilling holes using the Alright, so I drilled four holes, not to their final diameter yet. One of them might be off a little, <laughs> the drill wall, because I had drilled the uh, center hole before bolting down the drum. So bolting down the drum should have been the first thing. care about these axles. So. so I'm just gonna put three studs on each side just to make it uh, easier because <laughs> all I want to do is have the car roll around with this I'm not gonna put all five in this thing but it's working and see with my GM rotor fit down there no problem you know whether it's perfectly centered and round well that's anybody's guess I didn't put a dial on it or anything but it'll be certainly good enough to get the car moving around until I can get the correct axles so one more stud and this side is done all right we got a wheel on it put the three studs in and uh, that'll work fine for the car to move around. This is not going to be the permanent solution. I will buy new axles and drill those on a drill press using the uh, wheel adapter as a guide because doing it like this and just winging it, it's close, but it's not perfect. It's off a little bit. And would you feel it uh, driving the car? I don't know, but I just don't think there's enough 
uh, reason to use a four lug axle into a five. It just doesn't make sense. I'll use the fives. But uh, she's going to roll just fine. So now I got to do the other side and then finally get back to the suspension. And there it is. All right, works. Nice. Looks pretty good. There's no way it's gonna be perfect without using a drill guide, but that is more than good enough to move the car around. So, until I get my official axles, that will work out just fine. All right, so I gotta clean up this mess. And then uh, next thing will be taking all the brackets off of this rear. But I've been doing a lot of that lately. And then uh, putting it on the truck arms and finishing this thing up.